Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name's Kate. I'm a health coach and I post videos on a high fat, nutrient dense way of eating. If you like this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe. So today's video is gonna be the first of maybe a series, depending on how you guys like this. I'm gonna be comparing two different YouTubers, what I eat in a day videos, and looking at the nutrition in both of them. I really wanted to start this off by comparing a carnivore diet to a well-balanced vegan diet. And obviously there's tons of female vegan what I eat in a day videos out there, but I had a really hard time finding a female carnivore one other than myself. So I kind of had to scrap that for the time being. Actually, since I filmed and made this video, I saw East Coast Creep posted one. So maybe I can use that in the next video. But for today, we're gonna to be comparing Drew's diet, which is basically carnivore, to Jackson from Plantrionic. So we're gonna start off by looking at just the bare bones, raw nutritional data, basically the paper value. And then we'll start talking about things such as bioavailability, anti-nutrients, and other things that maybe lower the nutrition. All right, so I think that's everything I wanted to say in the intro, so let's get into it. Starting off looking at Jackson's macros for the day, he clocked in at just over 3,000 calories, 66 grams of protein, 700 grams carbs, 21 grams of fat, and then he had 108 grams of fiber and 267 grams of sugar. In comparison, Drew clocked in at 2,800 calories, 255 grams of protein, 49 grams of carbs, 182 grams of fat, no fiber, and 49 grams of sugar. We can see here that Jackson came out on top in terms of vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin K, but didn't have any vitamin B12, obviously, and also didn't have any vitamin D. Vitamin D, of course, is best obtained through the sun. So, I mean, he's outside riding his bike all day. He's probably getting an adequate amount of vitamin D anyways. Now, looking at minerals, Drew came out on top for just about everything except for magnesium. And in terms of trace elements, Jackson came out on top for iron and manganese. And Drew came out on top for zinc, copper, and iodine. Then we have omega-3s and omega-6s. So for total omega-3s, Drew was the obvious winner. And then for EPA and DHA, Jackson didn't get any, so Drew won there as well. Omega-6s were about the same. So on paper, both of these diets looked pretty good. But now let's talk about some things beyond the paper value. There are a few nutrients that are different in plant and animal forms, but that often get lumped together. Vitamin A is one example of this. The vitamin A in plants is beta carotene and needs to be converted into retinol for our bodies to use it properly. Our bodies can make this conversion, but it's not very efficient. 5% at most is converted. And 50% of the population can't make the conversion at all. Vitamin K is another nutrient that is different in plants and animals. In plants, it's K1. In animals, it's K2. K2 has been shown to be absorbed by the body more easily and also stored longer. 
Iron is another nutrient that is different in plants and animals. In plants, it is non-heme iron, and in animals, it's heme iron. Heme iron is more easily absorbed by the body, whereas with non-heme iron, it's between 2 and 20% that is absorbed. And then omega-3s, of course. Plants contain ALA, which needs to be converted into EPA and DHA in order for our bodies to use it. Similar to vitamin A, the conversion rate for this is very low. And the conversion rate also depends on the amount of omega-6s in your diet. Too many omega-6s and your body isn't going to convert any ALA into EPA and DHA, but if you have a balance, so about a one-to-one -one ratio between total omega-3s and omega-6s, then you are able to convert at least some of that. Now, I was actually surprised that in Jackson's diet, he did have a pretty good balance. Usually when you look at some of these vegan diets, they're pretty high in soy, they include more beans, um, and these are things that contain more omega-6s, so they throw this balance out of whack. But yeah, according to my calculations at least, Jackson was actually getting more omega-3s than omega-6s. And now let's talk about fat-soluble vitamins. These are vitamins A, D, E, and K. They are better absorbed by the body when they are eaten with fat, in Jackson's full day of eating, he was only getting 21 grams of fat. So this would mean he was absorbing less of the vitamin A, less of the vitamin E, and even less of the vitamin K. There are studies showing that people who ate a meal with at least 30 grams of fat compared to a fat-free meal absorbed 15 to 30% more of these fat-soluble vitamins. All right, so now let's talk about anti-nutrients. So the first one is oxalate. Oxalate is bound to minerals in plants and stops their absorption. So these are things such as calcium, magnesium, and zinc. So some of the foods Jackson was eating that are high in oxalate are things such as beets, potatoes, and beans. Phytic acid is another anti-nutrient. Two of the worst offenders of this in Jackson's diet would have been beans and rice. Studies show that foods that are high in phosphorus that also contain phytic acid 80% of that the body can absorb. And then we have lectins. Lectins are high in kidney beans and potatoes. Again, they stop the absorption of calcium, iron, phosphorus, and zinc. Now, when we look at Drew's diet, there are no anti-nutrients. He is also consuming a lot of fat, which means he will be able to absorb more of the fat-soluble vitamins. So with Jackson's diet, there's a bunch of factors, these anti-nutrients, the low amount of fat in his diet, that bring down the nutrient content. All right guys, thanks for watching. Obviously it is impossible to know exactly how much nutrition we are absorbing from what we're eating. So I mean, just take everything with a grain of salt. I think it's pretty clear to see that the nutrients in animal foods are more bioavailable, they're pre-converted, they're in the versions we need. It's basically just a shortcut. You're cutting out the conversions that your body has to make, basically making your body do less work. Anyways, let me know in the comments down below who you think the winner was. And I also just wanted to say, I know it probably seems like I'm biased. Obviously, I promote keto and carnivore, and I'm a little bit anti-vegan, but the reason my opinions are what they are is from researching this stuff, is to looking into the nutritional data of animals versus plants. I've said this before, but when I first heard of the carnivore diet, thought it was insane. I was concerned about not eating fiber. I was concerned about getting vitamins and minerals. And then I started looking into it and I was like, hey, all the vitamins we need are in animal foods. We don't need fiber. And it's just snowballed from there. I don't have another agenda or anything. All I'm focused on is health, helping people improve their health. You don't have to take my word for anything. Do your own research, look into things, come to your own conclusions, try different things. That's basically the gist of it. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. Remember to let me know who you think the winner is in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time.
Bye.